Good morning. I probably don't need this microphone. I do have a big enough voice for this room, so thank you very much, everyone, for joining us today. It's an absolute privilege to be able to talk in front of you. Um, yes, so automating customer communications to drive conversions and accelerate your revenue is what the premise of my conversation will be today, and really, hopefully, I wish you all the best to kind of take the learnings that we've developed from the report that I'll be discussing with you to elevate your own communications. But actually, before I do that, um, something that's really close to my heart and our regional director, Rowan, is actually being able to spend a few minutes with every presentation that we do to actually talk about charities in the local area that uh, are passionate to us and something that means something to us. So um, for anyone that knows, uh, the Breast Cancer Foundation, Cancer Touch is one in every three of us. So I think one of the things that I personally would like to talk about is just the Pink Ribbon Walk. Uh, any brand, any person, any individual can get involved. It's on the 5th of October. Please feel free to come down. It's in Singapore. And you can come down for four till eight and actually um, celebrate this wonderful charity and celebrate actually the great things that they're doing to help. I'm sure you don't need me to say. So there's a section within here as well. It's on how you can get involved, how you can register. You'll get all this deck afterwards. So I welcome you all just to get involved uh, and come join us in October. So before that, I actually have an agenda we'll talk through. Um, as an in introduction to who we are, is everyone okay with me kind of moving around? Is that all right? Cool. Uh, Dot Digital and our engagement cloud allow customers to communicate across email, SMS, push notifications, social channels. And we enable retailers to communicate faster, smarter, and more personalized with their end customers. That's pretty much the last you'll hear about kind of us as a brand. And what I want to focus on is actually our industry report that we've put together. So for the last 21 years, I've spent, uh, the company's been kind of running. I spent the last nine and a half years working with them. And through that time, uh, for the last 11 years, we've put together a report. And this report is on the best practice that you should, as brands, be applying to your own marketing communications. And so what we actually do is we buy products from retailers. We watch how you communicate with us from pre-sale to uh, during sale to post-sale. Over a six-month period, 15 people from our organization buy 100 products globally, and we watch how you communicate with us. And from that, in that six-month period, we put together a report. It's called Hitting the Mark, and it's there for you to understand how brands globally, as well as in APAC, are actually communicating with their customers and how there are opportunities for improvement that we can all make within our marketing today. So just to kind of talk you through the brands that are actually within this from the kind of uh, APAC region, you can see here from the ones that I'm just showcasing, you might know some of them. The report actually was put together October last year. We've just started the process now. This is the yearly thing that we put together to allow us to see how Hip Van, how Harvey Norman communicate with their customers across multiple channels and where we as brands can learn from what they're doing. Baked into kind of their e-commerce solution, how are they using data to personalize those customer communications? Are they doing the basics? Thank you for your order. Thank you for giving me your information. All these things are simple programs that can put together, but you'd be really surprised at some of the stats that we've seen from this. I'm really pleased to say, actually, 97% of brands in this region actually send a welcome email. It's like 65% in the UK that send an email to say, hey, thank you very much for sharing your information with me. It's a simple program that allows you as a brand to communicate initially with your customer. Just because we're on digital channels doesn't mean we don't do the thank you very much for your business. I've just bought a new car. You should shake my hand and thank me for that custom. Actually, when we come onto digital channels, we need to be even more so, and it's even easier to do it. As an area in for improvement rather than a negative, one in three companies didn't send a cart abandonment email. Is everyone comfortable with cart abandonment, browse abandonment? Yes? Woo! Sorry, I know you've not had your coffee yet. I'll be in about 40 minutes. So it's a simple program that when put together will actually generate you revenue from the offset. It takes minutes to put together. It takes seconds to integrate, especially if you're using integration with our product went into Magento, which is already baked in for you. But actually, one in three retailers didn't actually send one. This will make money straight away. 
60% of retailers are not practicing best practice segmentation. You collect data, use it. So if you're, a, if you're an online retailer, you're selling fashion, and you collect whether I'm male or female, and send me dresses, probably not going to buy them. I don't love Kimberly enough to buy dresses for her. And so as we look through the data that we collect, we need to be very careful on what we collect, not just from a legal perspective, but actually from a customer experience. Don't ask for something that you're not going to use. And when we look at the basics of segmentation, 60% of brands didn't do it. When it comes to how we communicate with customers, there's a plethora of channels. We look in the UK, WhatsApp, SMS. We look in the US, WhatsApp is more prevalent. If we look in China, it's WeChat. If we look at Indonesia, Line. All of these channels that we have, or the ability to communicate with customers, only 20% of companies actually were doing multi-channel communication. If you collect the data, if you collect the channels that they talk to you on, if you know that they've arrived on your website on a mobile device, why aren't you communicating with them? That's also, I've got my teddy bear. Karen's laughing at me. Brands only scored 38% on email relevancy. They only scored 48% on email best practice. This report that I'm actually talking about is very email-centric, but actually we watch across email, SMS, and other channels as well. Email best practice is so simple. We've got a report that you can download, which literally, line by line, gives you a checklist on what you need to go through. And it's a huge opportunity for improvement. When we look at the types of communications and how we talk to customers, if you go sale, 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 offer, promotion, sale, offer, promotion, sale, offer, promotion, you're bored of me saying it, let alone a brand that sits there and talks only to their customers when they want to tell them about something that's important to them, like their sale, like their offer like their next event that they're going to. When actually, a customer, if you buy a product, I want to know how to make that product last longer. The reason I buy these, which are Charles Turret shirts, they actually told me the detergent to use to make it look white. It's a year old shirt. Probably needs to lose a bit of weight, because, you know, to make it fit better, but the principle of this is, it fits good, it actually has the same color that I bought it. Why? Because the brand sent a series of communications to me about how to preserve that product. So now, I only buy Charles Turret shirts. They don't talk to me in a way that is just what they want to say. They give me useful, helpful information that allows me to enjoy their products better. Last one. Thanks for your purchase. Here's your product. What's next? Was it good? Do you like it? What's that human conversation that you actually want to have with someone? And send it digitally. 43% of brands didn't ask me, or ask our, the, the kind of team that we used to build this report. 43%. Do you like it? Was it good? Simple question. People are very responsive to digital communications. They will be expressive. They didn't like it they'll tell you. They really didn't like it, they'll leave on Trustpilot, they'll leave it on a review software, and they'll shout and scream. So the top five. Drum roll, no? Cool. Singaporean brand, fantastic. Zalora, so Cotton On, Iconic, and Surf Stitch. The really important thing here, which I think I'd like to say that we can hold to our own, Surf Stitch was actually third last year. And this year, they're first. I'd like to say they listened to our report. I'd like to say they went through and went through that process. And I'm glad to say they did. The Iconic has dropped a place. They were last year's number one. Why? Surf Stitch have actually implemented more of the best practice I'm going to walk you through. I think the most important thing when we have, you know, it's like a, that doesn't mean anything, does it? Until we actually look at why they won. Lots of information on here. Again. This presentation is available for you to download if you want to see this really tiny text. If we look at this campaign, a lot when we look at digital communications, people say hero text, above the fold, you know, too much imagery, not enough text. You're a fashion brand. It's all about imagery. Don't fall away from who you are as a brand. They kept a good mix of image to text as well, you know, having kind of the social links at the bottom. The brand clearly paid attention to offers and sales and promotions, but didn't shoot them at the top. Again, having a clear series of content that actually drives engagement is the most important aspect of any communication that you deliver. 
And if we look at how they delivered on mobile, anyone guess what the percentage of individual, how many phones has everyone got? One, hold your hand up. Two. Go on, three. We actually spend more time on our mobile device. And if you want to come see me later, I'll show you all the data that you're giving away. Your exact location right now in MBS is being tracked and shared with the world. Brands can use this to target you better, but actually, something as simple, can you just make the emails look good, please? We focus so much on these big ideas of hyper-personalization based on the fact that I walked in that door, when a simple thing about just making your content look good across multiple browsers is ignored. And so one of the things we're really happy about SurfStitch is they just took it all from best practice to having a clear unsubscribe process. If your customer does not want to hear from you anymore, make it really easy for them. And then ask them, hey, why don't you like us anymore? You're having human conversations at scale on multiple devices across multiple channels. Talk to them, just as if we are talking here today. The subscription through to automation, through to that preference center, was a fully end-to-end -end personalized journey that focused entirely on that customer. As we see, the learnings that we get from that are the things that we need to be doing today. So these are the programs, and actually on our stand, which is the first one on the left as you come into the main room, is the top 10 programs that you as brands should be running, and actually the returns that you should be getting from it. So sign up process. Everyone seen these popovers? I don't like them. It's hard to say. I do software that does this. As a person, I don't actually like them, but all the results, all the statistics, all the customer feedback tells me I'm wrong. I don't mind being wrong when the data tells me it. You'll have more captures. We had one of our clients, Barber, who went from capturing 1,200 customers in a three-month period to capturing 20,000 customers on their website in a three-month period just by implementing a popover. You're spending so much money driving traffic to your website through PPC, SEO, a sign-up in your store. Find ways to capture those customers. And if we look at Kogan, that's one of the things they stood out most. They made it really simple for anyone coming to their website that was a new customer, being able to capture them and drive relevant communications to them. There's loads of other examples from Qantas to Chris to British Airways that really show that I've flown with you. Why am I going on your website? Find the page that I'm looking at. Capture my information and talk to me. This is a bugbear for me. Probably guessed from my earlier comment. So Laura did it fantastically, not just having a first email, which we showed right from the start, that actually one in three brands was not sending a cart abandonment email. It's money you're leaving on the table. And one of the things that Zalora did really, really well was they had a three-stage program. Because actually the first message you get is, hey, you left this in your basket, showing the product, and then going, have 15% off. In the UK, for example, there's a company called Pizza Express. It's over here, actually, as well. If you sign up for their emails, for your birthday is tomorrow, you get a trigger email that gives you 20% off pizza. So that's the only thing everyone's going to remember, is that if you sign up for their birthday emails, you will get money off pizza. And that is, again, you're rushing straight to discount. You're rushing straight to an offer, sale, promotion. When, in fact, all we want to do is say, hey, Matt, obviously not my products, but this is what you left in your basket. Is there anything we can help with? Would you like to talk to someone? Would you like to come into store? Would you like to see the size guide? One of the most important things when we have fashion and we're buying online is that negativity, like, is it going to fit? Is it not going to fit? And so having a really clear communication channel to your customers is the most important thing. It's animating, fantastic. The way they did it right at the end was actually having free delivery, 15% off. Again, as brands, let's not rush to discount. Let's actually test it. Let's use this functionality we buy in our marketing platforms. It's called split testing. Let's test different offers, test different promotions. Don't just rush to it. Come with empirical evidence that says that actually offering a discount to your customers works. So for overall best practice, gotten on. I think, yeah, they sent like 200 emails to us in a six-month period. 
And what we've got there is an example of it doesn't matter about volume or how much you send, it's a quality. And so if we're sending good content, we're sending things that we're interested in, we're asking the question, hey, how do you want to hear from us? Are we doing this okay? Repetitive way of kind of communicating with your customer. You're not going to jeopardize your brand. If you make it really easy to unsubscribe as well, if they don't like it, they'll just click unsubscribe. And so Cotton On really demonstrated having their content, their calls to action, multiple devices in it rendering correctly. Volume did not matter. When we come to the next stage of what we're talking about, we look at the tactics that customers could be using to kind of take things to the next level. So I've bought this shirt. Doesn't quite go with the pants, but you know, I quite like glary shoes. So when I look at a website, don't show me the white shoes, the ones with just white or black. Show me the cool ones, the Larry ones. I want a bright yellow, bright green. Product recommendations is the first way that we can actually have a conversation with our customers that gives them content that's relevant to them. And we can do that across every channel. We can let machines tell us, as a marketeer, what products they're interested in. Not just based on what I've bought, but based on the fact that I've been looking at it. I'm interested in it. I've been talking to my friends on social channels about it. And then, with magic, we can personalize email communications. We can personalize the website to create a user journey that's specific to that customer. Just as if I walk into the Nike store with inside uh, Paragon and say, oh, Matthew, yeah, you're the guy that bought the red shoes. Wicked. These are the ones that I think you'll like next. That conversation that we're having, we can have on digital channels, and it's very easy to do. And something that Stir Stitch, which is why their overall winner for us did really well, was they did the product recommendations. They saw what we bought. There's nothing worse than buying a TV for like a thousand bucks. It's a big investment in a TV. One, I want it to last longer than three years, but you know, unfortunately, technology keeps advancing. But the next email I get from, I won't say the brand, offers on TVs. The TV I just bought, 800 bucks. Are you kidding me? That's like, you know, <laughs> big night out in Singapore. And so how we communicate with customers really needs to look at every digital touch point, how we're talking to them, and then using that information to, pr to personalize those e communications that we do. I bought something. Hey, thank you very much. Going through. You Foods did a really good, really good campaign that actually uh, focus specifically on the after, the after purchase. There's nothing worse than buying a product for a load of money and having really rubbish service. God forbid it actually goes wrong or something breaks with it. Timestamp post delivery, personalized follow up with discount for your next offer. Finally, survey. You like it? Is it good? Something I was reiterating earlier is the most important thing about an experience you have with a brand that drives loyalty, drives advocacy, is how you treat them after you've actually had them as a customer. How do you treat your customers will be the most important reason why they come back to you. And we're seeing time and time again brands that accelerate, that have year-on-year -year growth, especially in retail, whether it's TM Lewin, whether it's Barber, whether it's Burberry, the way they're actually developing their campaigns and the way they're building their recommendations and talking to their customers is the reason why they're getting double-digit growth. Beyond the email, it's not just email. You've got SMS, we've got WhatsApp, we've got WeChat, we've got Line, we've got push notifications. I can actually send a piece of direct mail. God forbid we actually just stick to digital channels. Where we can actually accelerate ourselves is looking at how we talk to our customers and use that information of how they interact with us to then dictate how we talk to them next. So SMS isn't working. They're not responding, not talking to you. Ignoring your WeChats and your WhatsApps, you're seeing the two blue ticks. There's no response back. You've just got ghosted. Right, okay. Let's push conversation in a different method out to social channels. Let's talk to them on the app if they have it downloaded. If not, we can use them multiple different ways, like Facebook Messenger to communicate with them. And something we can see here is time and time again, Brands are looking at different ways to talk to their customers, and te most important thing though, test it. Let's not just have that kind of approach of, we're now communicating with our customers on Facebook Messenger. Put 10% of your audience down that route and test whether or not that works for you as a brand. 
So, if I've just talked and wandered around this, and there's just a couple of things we want to go through, have a communication schedule that talks to your customers in a human way. Welcome them to your uh, communications, whether it's an email or SMS or whatever channel it is, but talk to them in a way that's synonymous with your brand, and do it quickly. You're saying thank you to someone after you know, two days of them giving you your data, just it's rude more than anything. As far as kind of the piece that I really want to stress is that after sales. There's nothing worse than buying a product and then being treated differently than you had been when you were buying it. So the overall observation that we saw for the brands that really did well was it was Hip Van, it was Iconic, it was Surf Stitch. Their after sales was good, but Surf Stitch was just so much better. They did so well to really kind of communicate with us and just give us all the options to target and communicate. Same, 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 same. Whether it's offer sale promotion or it's the same content or the same structure. Um, how am I doing for time? All good? Awesome. If you keep doing the same thing over again, it's the definition of insanity. You keep doing the same thing over and again and expecting different results, like they're going to buy something they're not going to buy, you're going to let yourself down. You're going to let them down as well. They gave you the honor of giving you their data. Communicate with them effectively. The highs and lows of Singapore was specifically, we did really well of being able to communicate with our customers from the start. We have opportunities right at the end, the after sale, the post purchase, ask for feedback, do product recommendations, take your marketing to the next level through product recommendations, through AI driven product recommendations. I'm guessing you all use Magento. We're integrated into the base layer of Magento. It's a fully proved integration that allows you all of the stuff that I've talked about today. And so we have, we have the opportunity, you have the technology, it's there for you to use. Now let's maximize it. Don't really like this. My boss is from Australia, so you know, he doesn't like me either. But the guy, you know, New Zealand Kiwis did really, really well. And it was great to see that they had uh, all of the overall best practices that we talked about and really focused themselves on taking their marketing to the next level third to first in 12 months. And don't worry, this year, we're actually doing it again. So I have 18 products. I don't know what they are yet. This could be, I hope it's an iPad. I really want an iPad. Arriving at my door will be watching how you communicate with us, how you talk to us, what emails you send, what texts you send, and how you actually converse. But if you want to download a copy of our report and more of the findings, you can do so on the link here. Finally, there's copies on the booth as you go to the left on the outside. My Chloe, Clara, oh, and Rowan is in town from Australia, but this is, your, this is the team that we have based here in Singapore. Globally though, this is us, we're all a bit crazy, kind of like me. Uh, very quirky, we didn't wear our uh, logos today with our branding, but this is pretty much how our offices look on a day-to-day. -day. Offices all around the world, and we're here to help brands communicate with their customers better. And the results speak for themselves. Accolade Wines, 15% increase in gross revenue. If you could give, get that to yourself, how would you look as far as on, you know, in front of the shareholders or your, kind of your directors? 28% increase in monthly revenue. Could you ask for anything more? And finally, 17% conversion rate. Isolati is a fantastic brand. They had the first world problem of being an aggregator of travel. And so being able to showcase a 17% conversion rate increase from Facebook, really, really help them. So stop by, come say hello. I just want to say thank you so much for listening and I hope you enjoyed it. And if there's anything more you want to talk to us about, we're just on the outside on the left. Thank you very much.